Hi class, in this section today we are going to be reviewing our properties of exponents. So the properties of exponents are written down here. Um, so I'm going to go through the basic ones. So there is the product of power, so if you have the same base and different exponents, you add your exponents. If you have one base raised to a power that's raised to another power, um, you end up multiplying those exponents. The power of a product, we essentially distribute the exponent. And the same goes for the power of a quotient. We are going to essentially distribute your exponents. The quotient of powers is well, the quotient is when we have a fraction and we are going to subtract our exponents with the m minus the n. Um, if you have a negative exponent, think of it as a to the m a to the minus m over 1. Essentially, if it is a negative exponent, we're going to bring it down to the denominator. And then likewise would go if it was negative in the denominator, it would end up going to the numerator. And the last one, which is cut off of my screen, but it's on your paper, is a to the 0 equals 1. So let's go ahead and simplify some problems. Okay, so we're going to use our properties of exponents to evaluate. Um, so whenever we see a negative exponent, we're going to flip-flop it between the numerator and the denominator and then just make the exponent positive instead of negative. So I'm going to bring the 3 to the negative 4 down and the 3 to the minus 2 up. And at the same time, I'm going to use the power of a power property, which allows us to multiply those. So my um, 3 to the 4 goes to the bottom and my 3 squared goes up. So I have the 3 squared on the top and I'm going to multiply it by um, over um, here I have 3 to the 6th power because I multiply my exponents and the denominator I have 3 to the 4th. So we can do it this multiple ways. So either I can um, apply the quotient of the powers that has me subtract these two or I can do the product of a power where I add the two. You'll get the same result. So I'm going to start off by adding. So I get 3 to the 8th over 3 to the 4th. And then I'm going to apply the power of a quotient. No, sorry, I'm sorry. The quotient of powers where I'm going to subtract 3 to the 8 minus 4, which is 4. Um, and that is how we've simplified it. Okay, so for the next problem, we have fractions. So it's going to be clear that we're going to use the power of a quotient property, which tells us that we can distribute our exponent. So I'm going to distribute my exponent to all the terms. So I have 3 to the 4th over 5 to the 4th, and that's being multiplied by 3 to the negative 7th over 5 to the negative 7th. Now whenever we have the negative exponent, we're going to flip-flop it so that it's between the numerator and the denominator. And I said negative 7, but it didn't show up. Okay, so this 5 to the negative 7 gets flip-flopped to the top, and 3 to the negative 7 gets flip-flopped to the bottom, and we make the exponent positive. So then we have 3 to the 4th over 5 to the 4th. We're going to multiply this, where we have 5 to the 7th on the top, and 3 to the 7th on the bottom. So I have 3 to the 4th and 3 to the 7th. So if you imagine 3 to the 4th being expanded out, it's 3 being written 4 times. And 3 to the 7th, if I were to expand that out, is 3 written 7 times. 5, 6, 7 times. So since they're all being multiplied, they can be cancelled. So I have four of them on top being canceled with four of them on the bottom, and I'm left with just three, and they're located in the bottom. If I decide to apply the quotient of powers rules where I subtract them, you would do three to the fourth minus seven, because you bring the um, both exponents up to the numerator. So it'd be three to the four minus seven in the top, which would be three to the minus 3, which we would in turn, since it's 3 to the minus 3, bring it down to the denominator, which is the same thing. Likewise, my 5 to the 4th and my 5 to the 7th, using my quotient rules, I'm going to subtract my exponents. So I have 5 to the 7 minus 4, which gives me 5 cubed. So and then I had my 3 cubed 
on the bottom. So it ends up being 5 cubed over 3 cubed, and that would be simplified, which if you wanted to evaluate all the way out, it would be 125 over 9. Okay, so for this next problem, we're going to simplify. When we simplify, we are just going to cross off any like terms from between the top and the bottom. So I'm going to start off by canceling the y squareds because one's on the top and one's on the bottom. And then I'm going to move my negative exponents between the top and the bottom. So I'm going to move those two terms up. So I have my x squared, and then I have my x to the fourth and my 3 stays on the bottom. My 3 didn't have an exponent, so that stayed there. And then my y cubed got moved down to the bottom. And now I'm going to add my two exponents in the numerator using the product of powers. So it becomes x to the sixth over 3y cubed. And that is simplified. Okay, so for this next problem, we're going to continue to simplify. And there's lots of approaches we can do. So one approach that you could start with is simplifying by flip-flopping the negatives. Another approach you could do is just by simplifying the problem as much as you can first. So for example, 5 and 15 can get simplified because that's a 3, and 4 goes into 12 three times. You can also look at your y's on the end these y's over here. So if you have y to the fourth over y squared, remember on the top you have y four, four y's written out, and the bottom you have two y's written out. So my y squared cancels with um, two of the top of my y's on top. So I end up that is a y squared. Um, and I'm just going to cross it all off and write it as a y squared, just so I know what I'm doing. The next thing you can do is apply the product of powers property, where you have an x cubed and an x to the minus 3. So they both have the same base of an x, and I'm multiplying them. So if you're multiplying them, then you add your exponents. And 3 minus 3 is 0, so it ends up being x to the 0, those two, and x to the 0 is 1. So then this x cubed and the x to the minus 3 cancel. Another way you can think about it is x to the minus 3. It's a negative exponent, so you can bring it down to the denominator. So when it's in the denominator, they're going to cancel because you'd end up with an x cubed down in the bottom, canceling with the x cubed on the top. Okay, so what I'm left with now is my y to the minus 1, which I'm going to bring down. And it's multiply, so it's really just one big fraction. So what I'm left with on the bottom is this 3, and this y squared is what I'm left in the top. I'm taking my y to the minus 1 and bringing it down, and I have this 3, and then I have this x, and I don't have anything else. So I can cancel my 3's and I have a y squared and a y to the 1 power. Um, so I'm left with 1y in the numerator because 2 minus 1 is 1. Um, I'm left with an x in the denominator. Okay, so when simplifying the next problem, we have the inside the parentheses. So we definitely want to simplify inside the parentheses. So my x's, I see I have x in the top and x in the bottom. Since I have three of them written out on the top, top and four of them written out on the bottom, all of my x cubes get crossed off with three of my x's on the bottom, so I'm left with just x to the one power on the bottom. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute my negative exponent, and I'm going to distribute to all the terms, including that three. Um, that's the most common place for people to forget it. And when we distribute it, we're going to use the power of a power product that says that when it's to a power to some power, you multiply the exponents. So my y has an exponent of 4, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 2, which is going to give me y to the negative 8. And I have z to the 2, and I'm going to multiply those. So it's going to be z to the negative 4, all over 3 to the negative 2. And x, remember that was x to the 1 power, so it's going to be x to the negative 2, since I'm multiplying them. And anything with a negative gets brought to the numerator. So my numerators go down and my denominators um, go up. So I'm going to bring 
my y's down, my z down, my 3 up, and my x up. So everything gets flip-flopped. So it ends up becoming 3 squared x squared over y to the 8th, z to the 4th. And you can write out 3 squared as 9. Um, they would both be okay to write it like this or the other way. When it's simplified, you know you're done simplifying if you don't have the same variable on the top and the bottom or if you don't have two variables of the same type on the top and also you don't want any negative exponents. Okay, so here we are going to solve. So it's solve means solve for x. So first I'm going to simplify by using the product of power. So it has the same base. So I'm going to add my exponent. So it's 5 plus x equals 5 to the negative 7. Now they have the same base. So if these two are equal and the bases are already equal, then the exponents must be equal. So I know that 5 plus x must equal negative 7 or x, if I subtract 5 to the other side, must equal negative 12. Okay, so for this one, I have to remember my order of operations. So I have to multiply and deal with exponents. Um, so first, I'm going to deal with my exponents first, because PEMDAS tells me I need to do my exponents first. So first, I'm going to multiply those, because x is one of my exponents. So I have 3 to x or sorry, 7 to the 3x over 7 squared is 7 to the 10th. So now that I've dealt with my exponents, I can do my multiplication and division. So using my rule, the quotient rule that says I subtract my exponents, it's going to be 7 to the 3x, so my exponent on the top, minus the exponent of the denominator, and that still equals 7 to the 10th. So just like the previous problem, since the bases are the same, if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then our exponents must also be equal. So then I know that 3x minus 2 must equal 10. So I'm going to add 2 to the other side. So 3x equals 12. And if I divide by 3, I get that x equals 4 as my answer. So those are the rules of the exponents. Um, I hope you have a good day.